So we just got done rolling here, and uh, I, I tweaked my knee a couple weeks ago, and I kind of tweaked it again. And uh, I got Dr. Tom Dieters here. He's a uh, editor-in-chief of Muscle and Fitness for 15 years. He's worked with all sorts of bodybuilders at the, the top level of competition. Seen everything from torn muscles, ripped tendons, ligaments, you name it, he's seen it. So he's sort of, a, he's sort of my go-to guy, the old Jim's go-to guy on what to do when you get injured. So, so Dr. Tom, what are the most common injuries that you've seen uh, in sports, but particularly in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu? Yeah, in BJJ, you know, it's you know, it's not a question of if you're going to get hurt; it's a question of when you're going to get hurt, and that could just be a minor tweak. Usually, it is, uh, but a lot of a lot of muscle strains, you know, a lot of shoulder strains, rotator cuff strains, cervical spine uh, strains, uh, a lot of hand type of injuries in terms of you know straining the finger, spraining the finger, uh, you know pulling a uh, you know a, a hamstring. You know, guilty here of dealing with one of those right now. Uh, so it's basically, you know, all the musculoskeletal injuries that we would see, and it's a question of what tissues are involved. So is it muscle, is it tendon, or is it ligament? And determining which structure is involved is going to determine how fast you're going to be able to heal and how you should treat that particular injury. The thing that people don't realize is, is that it, the first 24 to 72 hours after the injury is really the most important time that's going to determine how well and how fast you're going to heal. Okay, so all injuries, whether you and, and let's get some some uh, kind of some vocabulary out of the way first. Muscle tissue gets strained. Okay, ligaments get sprained. Okay, you sprain an ankle, you strain a bicep. Mm. Okay. But structurally, it's kind of the same thing, and which means that you've torn some cells, you've torn some fibers of that ligament, of that muscle, of that tendon. And anytime you tear some tissue, there's going to be some damage, there's going to be some, some bleeding because you've actually ruptured some cells uh, or some capillaries. And we have to deal with that inflammatory response. You know, you get that swelling, you get that pain, and inflammation becomes the key component of your body's response to an injury within minutes, you know, oftentimes. I mean, we've seen people who have, you know, rolled ankles, and man, their, their ankle's this big, you know what I mean, in just, you know, 10 or 15 minutes. Because the inflammation is the body's normal physiological response to tissue damage and injury. But what happens is, is it, it kind of goes haywire. It, it, it goes out of control and creates a situation where, for example, in a sprained ankle, an untreated sprained ankle, you may damage a certain amount of muscle, uh, or excuse me, amount of ligamentous tissue. Let's call that 100 units of ligamentous tissue. But because of the swelling and inflammation, if it's not addressed immediately and adequately and properly, you may kill an additional 500 units of ligamentous tissue. Because that inflammation, that swelling puts pressure on the capillaries, right, which deliver you know, oxygen to the tissue and bring in healthy nutrients and remove metabolic waste products and help the, the tissue repair. But if they're uh, restricted in their blood flow because of pressure, you're not going to get good nutrients in and you're not going to remove the waste products. So cells start dying and becoming hypoxic. They get strangled uh -huh. because the blood flow is shut off to that area because of that pressure from the inflammation. So it gets worse. So it gets worse, absolutely. Which is why if you look at the science in, of, of uh, you know sports injury rehab and sports injury treatment nowadays, you've got professional athletes who are getting sometimes pretty severe injuries and they're getting back on the field in a relatively short period of time because Nowadays, we have the technology and the knowledge and the wherewithal to treat them immediately to short circuit that inflammatory response. So let's talk about some things we can do to minimize inflammation. We've all heard of RICE, okay? It stands for rest, ice, compression, and elevation. So the first thing, which is not always obvious, particularly in BJJ, is you gotta rest it, okay? <laughs> so you can't just tough it out. If you get tweaked when you're rolling, stop rolling for that night, and then you gotta take care of this thing. And, and usually ice is the best way to go. Um, ice reduces the inflammatory response and it's got an added bonus of reducing pain but here's the other kicker a lot of guys got sore muscles a few days later and they're stiff because they pulled or strained a muscle and they say well I'm gonna put heat on it well let me tell you something about the difference between ice and heat both of them the whole thing that we want is increased circulation right we want to increase circulation to the tissue so that it can heal properly and quickly we want to come back on the mat pretty quick right, mm -hmm, right. so both ice and heat will increase circulation. You say, wait a minute, you know, ice reduces circulation, it freezes the area. It does temporarily. 
Mm. But when you take the ice pack off, the body tries to rewarm the tissue and has a rebound increase in circulation that is actually greater than the increase in circulation you get by putting a hot pack on the same tissue. So it pumps more in as it warms back up. Absolutely. And you don't have the problem of increasing the inflammatory response, which is what happens when you put heat on something. Heat will draw blood into the urea, but will also make those capillaries, those little teeny blood vessels, more leaky. So now the tissues become more inflamed. So whenever you have an acute injury, or a lot of times even with a chronic injury, you want to stay away from heat. Mm. It will increase the inflammatory response. So get ice on there. Well, proper ice pack, never just a naked ice cube or something on your skin. You've got to be careful of frostbite. Mm -hmm. uh, but you can go 20, 30 minutes, and you can do that multiple six, eight, ten times a day. Mm. Okay? No hot tubs. So, so no hot tubs. Okay. Absolutely what not. About, what about icy hot? I know that's popular. Icy hot is a surface irritant, okay? okay? It can give you some pain relief, but what it does is it basically, it, it, it uh, causes an increase in blood flow on the skin, which masks the pain underneath it, mm, okay? So it treats the symptom. So it treats the symptom more than it does, you know, when you've got a strain or a sprain, you want to make sure you're treating the cause, right? Okay. So we want to rest it, we want to get ice on there. Compression is important. And when I say compression, we're talking about a compression bandage. You don't want it so tight that you cut the circulation off to the rest of the foot. Uh, but, uh, for example, with a sprained ankle, mm -hmm. right? But you do want to use compression intermittently. The other thing that is important is, for example, if you sprain the lateral aspect of, of your ankle here around this little knobby thing called the lateral malleolus, there is a donut, a rubber donut, very soft, that you can put on there underneath an ice pack which will actually compress the tissue that's injured so the inflammation is minimized, mm, okay? Okay. And then the last thing is elevation. We know that if we've you know, sprained a wrist or a finger, you know, we hold it up above our heart, it doesn't throb as bad, right? So the blood doesn't flow down to it, which can also minimize the inflammatory response. So it sounds simple, but icing, icing, icing is so very important to do it immediately, not just once, not just twice, uh, I mean, for example, when I tore my hamstring, I was icing eight or ten times a day, 30-minute intervals, mm, okay. okay? Just to constantly keep that inflammation under control um, and using compression bandages intermittently. Elevation, you got to be careful. You don't want to leave something elevated too long because that blood can, can kind of pool in that area and you don't want to end up with a clot or something like that. Mm -hmm. So that, that's the immediate stuff, which is so very important. At the same time, immediately, we want to address the nutritional demands, right? Vitamin C is a chief component of connective tissue healing. Okay, connective tissue, we're talking tendons and ligaments now. No matter what we do. No matter what we do. And when you tear a muscle, uh, a muscle fiber or um, an area inside the belly of a muscle, whatever you tear there, it's going to heal with scar tissue, all right? We want to minimize scar tissue formation because scar tissue now is not healthy muscle tissue, so it doesn't have the tensile capacity, it's not as strong, right? And it doesn't have the elastic property, it's not as flexible of healthy tissue, right? So lots of vitamin C. You know, I remember, you know, in my years when I was uh, with a Muscle and Fitness magazine, we did an article in an interview with Linus Pauling. This guy was saying take 10 to 15 grams of vitamin C a day. Sounds crazy, but this guy won a Nobel Peace Prize for his research on that. And there's some people who say that you know you need three to five thousand milligrams a day, you know, a thousand milligram intervals, you know, with meals, okay, to maximize that healing effect. I can't recommend that, but I'm just telling you that's what a lot that's what some of the literature suggests. In some cases, it's way beyond, beyond the USRDA. Um, I was a heavy vitamin C and still am a very uh, heavy vitamin C user. Vitamin C again, connective tissue healing. It's also an anti-inflammatory. It blocks cortisol a little bit. It's a very interesting nutrient. Test your supplements with meals because you have the best digestive and enzymatic activity. You get the best absorption, okay. and you don't want to just give your body all at once because all of a sudden it spills over. It gets filtered out by your kidneys, and you end up having very very expensive urine okay yeah. <laughs> so um, you know lots of water keep the keep the body flushed and hydrated well so you can have great circulation increased protein uh, there's been a lot of research and, and research that I personally believe in with the alkaline diet to control the inflammatory response the caveman diet mm -hmm. uh, which is basically you're talking a lot of protein a lot of vegetables very low in carbohydrates Okay. Al alkaline is the opposite Alkal of acid. Right. So okay. there's the acidic condition in your body, which the inflammatory response you know, creates an acidic condition and an alkaline condition. We want to be alkaline to promote healing. Proteolytic enzymes. These are enzymes, again, that mediate this is over-the-counter stuff. There's a product uh, by Labrada Nutrition called Sorzyme, uh, and it helps, again, uh, mediate delayed onset muscle soreness and some of the inflammatory response. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, and again, this is just everything I did because I you know, I wanted to use every bit of knowledge I had on myself as a guinea pig, right? And this is all to get rid of the inflammation. To correct? control inflammation control and inflammation. promote healing. Okay. Okay. Uh, oral non-steroidal anti-inflammatories. Okay. Uh, Aleve, you know, was was that I what I took again? That's a medication. In any over kind of medication, you got to make sure you don't have ulcers and talk to your doctor about it. But I'm just telling you again what mm -hmm. I did. And also magnets. There's mm -hmm. been some really interesting research on magnets, which will increase circulation in areas. So when I wasn't icing, okay, or wasn't getting treated with ultrasound or interferential, I was wearing magnets as mm -hmm. well. Okay. okay. The last category over here is a professional category, uh, whereby you have to go see either a physical therapist, chiropractor, or an orthopedist. Um, and that's pulsed ultrasound, you know, 20% ultrasound, which will help, uh, you know, pump some of that inflammation out of there. Interferential, which increases circulation and healing uh, capability of the area. And acupuncture is very successful for pain relief uh, and can also uh, increase healing as well. So this was my master checklist. Uh, I was doing all of this. I was doing it multiple times throughout the day. Um, and it worked very, very well. I'm way ahead of schedule. And, and again, that's, that's, this isn't about me. It's about trying to apply the latest cutting edge science and nutritional research, which is what, you know, if you look at NFL athletes, I mean, these guys are multi-million dollar guys, right? right. They don't want to be hurt. Their owners don't want them hurt. So they're trying to do everything they can. A lot of these modalities here are, are what athletes are being treated with very aggressively and very successfully. So if somebody was to do the rice, the vitamin C, the water, everything that you just recommended yep. here, yep. What, what would be a time frame that they could cut off and they could get back to training? I guess well, that's what everybody wants. That's, an, that, you know, that's yeah. a, an excellent question. Again, it depends on which tissue structure is involved. Mm -hmm. Muscles heal quicker because they have better circulation to them. Ligaments and tendons, they depend more on uh, you know, the uh, osmotic pressure and diffusion to get nutrients in and out of them. They don't have veins run, running through ligaments or, or tendons. They have to get their nutrients from around them, so they heal more slowly. Uh, you know, if you've got a severe muscle tear, it can take months, you know, if you pop a hamstring, you know, some people say it could take six months to a year to get back up to 100%. You know, if you do everything correctly, you can probably cut that time in half. Mm, okay. And now, is, is there anything else that we can do to speed recovery? We talked about the first 24 to 78 hours. Right. Is there anything we can do actively, like stretching or anything along those lines? Yeah, the, you know, the, now you're starting in, in the rehab, but again, you know, my philosophy was start to rehab very, very early on. And when I say rehab, I'm not talking about lifting weights. I'm not talking about resistance exercise. I'm just talking about even in the first week after a muscle tear, just closing your eyes and barely trying to contract that muscle just to keep the, the neuronal pathways active. Because when you have an injury, your brain just basically kind of, you know, turns down the current to that area because it wants to protect it. Your body, your brain doesn't want you injuring yourself more severely. But to keep those neural... That's why I limp when I hurt my knee? Exactly. Oh. That's why you, or, or anything, you know, so if you, you hyperextend your elbow, somebody catches you in an arm bar a little bit mm -hmm. too long, you don't tap quick enough, right? You're going you're gonna to be splinted. Your biceps and triceps go into spasm to try to protect that injured area. Mm. That's why a low back goes into spasm when you, you know, kind of tweak a facet joint, the spinal joints, or irritated disc. It's the body's natural protective mechanism. So it depends what tissue is involved, and that's also going to determine how it should be treated. Mm. You know, in which of these modalities and how often, and, you know, it's for ultrasound and interferential. But that's an individual thing, you know, as well that you know you need to discuss with your with your doctor. Do your rice rest, ice compression, elevation, mm -hmm. and then you want to supplement that with all the things to reduce inflammation. Because the quicker we can reduce inflammation, the quicker we're gonna get healed, the quicker we can get back on the mat. Right. That's the vitamin C, the water, the protein, the proteolytic enzymes, the NSAIDs, the magnets, uh, everything over on the other board. Yeah. I don't have my glasses on so I can't see. Yeah, yeah. Uh, pulse ultrasound and then acupuncture. Right. And is there anything else you can add? Well, you know, we again, here? this was my hit list. Mm -hmm. Not everybody's gonna do every one of these things, okay? But I, you know, I, I had the opportunity, I had the time, I had the, the, the knowledge base, so it was like, you know, why not do all this stuff? Mm -hmm. You know, so um, this was everything that I put together that I was familiar that would help control and reduce that inflammatory response and expedite healing. And you know, and again, this isn't about me. I'm just sharing this information because everything we talked about here has been proven, you know, to be able to get results on people to help them heal more quickly. And it's time we share that with folks. Oh, fantastic. Well, Dr. Tom, right. I do appreciate you coming down and sitting with us today. And uh, and uh, that's a wrap.